How fast will Starlink be once I hit my data cap? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again for joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. Smokiness guys, love it. Hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking video, talking photo. Today is a tech day. It's a Starlink day. It is a follow-up to yesterday's video. I got a whole bunch of questions about how fast will my Starlink be once I hit my data cap? Because people are getting prepared for this data cap to be implemented. In the last video, I asked you guys to send over a link or any other information that you have as far as this data cap. And a really nice guy, his name is Jimmy Gray, appreciate you, sent me over an email, I believe it was, or maybe a DM, whatever. He sent me over some information with a link that takes you over to a page that gives you a list of information. And I took a look at this chart and obviously it doesn't say exactly what the answer is, but as I always do, kind of read between the lines, I think I have something that is pretty accurate for you guys. Anyways, before I get into it, I want to say two things. Number one, if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. They are free just for you being here. Also, if you're looking for a VPN, the VPN that I'm currently using is Pure VPN. And the nice folks over there at Pure VPN gave me a link that will give you a major discount, a holiday discount that's about 82% off. I know it's crazy, but if you go to jchristina.com forward slash VPN, once again, jchristina.com forward slash VPN, it'll automatically take you over to that discount. So check that out if you're looking for a VPN. I almost forgot, if you are one of the many people that ordered teas, I made about 75 or 100 teas like just the other day. We finally got, they look like this if you didn't know. I finally got all those organic ingredients back in. I don't use any kind of junk. If I can't get the good stuff, the good organic product, I won't make them at all, period. And that's why we were backed up on these for about two weeks. Anyways, all of the ingredients came back. And uh, like I said, I made 75, 100 of them. So if you were one of the people that ordered any of my teas, doesn't matter which one it is, this one is Dreamscape for sleepy time. Anyways, if you are one of those people that ordered those teas, you're going to be seeing them in your mailbox within the next couple of days. Let's look into this. Now, what I did is... I went into the policies and the agreements and all the rest of this stuff over on SpaceX Starlink site so that we can see what is going on. But this changes all the time. It's like a moving target. So I want to read to you some of this stuff off the site that is very pertinent to this question. And then I want to bring up that chart that Jimmy led me over to so that we can go through that also. And once again, try to read between the lines or read the tea leaves or... Let's say, ask the tarot. Anyways, let's take a look at this. Now, to begin with, it tells us what this reasonable network management is. And this is something that's very important. This is kind of new. Now, they know that they need to balance supply and demand. And what they say is Starlink is a finite resource that will continue to grow as we launch additional satellites. To serve the greatest number of people with high-speed internet, we must manage the network to balance Starlink supply with user demand. Makes sense. Also, they talk about traffic neutrality. I think this is awesome because not all companies or ISPs do this. They say, we treat internet traffic equally without discrimination based on content, sender, application, or service. Network management practices are deployed based on technical requirements for specific categories of traffic. These practices are applied in an application agnostic manner, meaning that the treatment of traffic is independent of the content of data. Now, this is big because there's a lot of ISPs out there that look at the traffic that you're using and then manage it accordingly. They'll either drop down your speed or if you're watching a video, they'll lower it to a degree. So instead of 1080p, you'll end up with 720. There's a lot of things that they do based on the data that you are, let's say, transacting. What SpaceX Starlink is saying here is we are using a traffic agnostic or traffic neutrality, as they call it, where it doesn't matter what traffic is being used, 
It doesn't matter what you're doing with it, you're still going to be treated the same. Application to application, category to category, it doesn't make a difference. I love that. They also talk about distributing data based on the service plans that they offer. It says, we seek to distribute the data among users in a fair and equitable manner by one, implementing network management policies when the demand for network resources actually exceeds supply. And two, allowing users to choose among service plans at various price points, depending on how much prioritized service is right for their needs. We have basic data or basic access, and we have priority or prioritized data or access. And that's what we're going to get into here. Now, residential services is the main meat and potatoes that we're going to cover. Of course, there's business, there's maritime, there's flight, there's RV, mobile, there's all kinds of different things. But looking at residential and maybe mobile, just to get an idea of what's going on here, priority access. Each service plan is allocated a certain amount of data for priority access each month. Priority access data is giving precedent over basic access data in the Starlink network. After your priority access is exhausted, you will continue to have unlimited of basic access for the remainder of your billing cycle. Now, they continue by talking about peak and off-peak hours. They say for residential service plans, your data usage will only count towards the priority access data limit during the hours of 7 a.m. till 11 p.m. Those are peak hours. Your usage between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. or off-peak hours will not count towards priority access data limits. So as I've said in a previous video, if you need to do any kind of downloading of large files, maybe you're updating your computer, you're updating your phone, you're downloading videos, maybe Blu-ray videos, type of massive videos that are literally gigs and gigs and gigabytes. Some of the games that we see on the computers are up to like 100 gigabytes. That is about 10% of your one terabyte of priority access data right in one download. So you have to be mindful of that. They continue with basic access impact. In times of network congestion, users with basic access may experience slow speeds and reduced performance compared to priority access, which may result in degradation or unavailability of certain third-party services or applications. Bandwidth intensive applications such as streaming videos are most likely to be impacted. Importantly, in areas that are uncongested or at times of low usage, users should not notice any difference in performance between priority or basic access during normal use. That's very important. Now, they finalize all this with tracking data use and purchasing more priority access. And they talk about this. They say, you can track your monthly data usage and purchase additional priority access at any time via the Starlink app and on the Starlink customer portal or their website by opting into automatically being charged for additional priority access once you hit your data limit. What that means is you tick a little box and say, yes, go ahead and charge me if I go over my one terabyte. And how much they charge you is gonna be the next question, right? I'm glad you asked. So if you are a residential customer, you're gonna be charged about 25 cents per gigabyte after that one terabyte. Now, if you are a business customer, you're gonna see charges of about a dollar per gigabyte over that terabyte. Whereas if you are a, let's say a maritime customer or a commercial user, you're gonna see about $2 a gigabyte over that terabyte. So it does get to be expensive, but as a residential user, you're gonna look at about 25 cents per gigabyte. For me, I don't think it's worth it. I think it makes more sense to be more cognizant of your usage during the month. Once again, I did a video about that. I think it is really easy to be able to maintain a under one terabyte of data usage if you are more cognizant about when certain things are downloading and set things up and schedule things and only allow certain services to download updates during certain times. And I talked about that once again in this video. Go check that out. So coming full circle to the question at hand, once you exhaust your priority access data and your move to basic access, 
this, what can you expect as far as your data rates? I'm going to read the tea leaves here, read between the lines and try to come up with something for you. And I think that I'm right, but if I'm wrong, you let me know in the comments below because I'm not always right and some of you guys are smarter than I am. So what I found here is when I look at this, they have performance fixed service plans. And what we can see is there's a standard, a business and a best effort or RV plan. When we look at the chart, we see that the service availability is 99% right across the board, which it has to be almost these days with ISPs. The latency remains the same between 25 and 50 milliseconds. Now what changes is the expected download and the expected upload data rate the megabits, let's say per second. Now with standard service, we see that we're getting anywhere between 20 and 100 megabits down. Now you saw in yesterday's video, I think I got an average of 138 megabits down, which is pretty nice. It's actually over what they're stating here. Can't beat that. Now the expected upload for the standard is five to 15. We were getting about nine and a half. So we're right in the middle, not too bad. Let's call it 10 megabits up is what I'm currently getting. So once again, I'm happy with that. Now in business, we changed that over to 40 to 220 megabits down with an upload of eight to 25 megabits. Now best effort in RV, this is important, five to 50 megabits down and two to 10 megabits up. Now, the reason I think that this is important is because I feel that best effort in RV is the same thing as basic coverage in comparison to your prioritized access. So let's call the best effort or RV basic access and let's call the standard service your prioritized access. Let's use that as a baseline because I think it makes sense. And I'll tell you why in just a second. So the way I look at this standard data would be the same thing as prioritized access, let's call it. Whereas best effort or mobile or RV would be the same thing as your basic access. And the difference between the two is anywhere between 40 and 50%. So if you have prioritized access or priority data, in comparison to basic data, the priority data will be about 40 to 50% faster. Or conversely, if you exceeded your one terabyte of priority data and been bumped down to basic data, you're going to be about 40 to 50% slower. So this is the way I see it. Maybe you guys see it differently. You let me know. My question is this, what happens if you are a mobile customer or RV or your best effort, let's just say. And when we look at the chart, there is no access or there's no availability to buy priority data if you are on mobile or RV or best effort. You can't get it, period. So if that is the case, what will Starlink do if they have a mobile RV or best effort customer that is exceeding that one terabyte? What happens then? Because there's no information about that here. Would their data be cut once again in half? So it's like a quarter of the speed of prioritized access data. I don't know. Does that mean that they can go from this degraded, let's say, data rate back up to basic data if they pay 25 cents, you know, a gigabyte? I don't know because nowhere does it say that. I, I just, I have not a clue. But I think it's an interesting question and it is something that needs to be addressed because once again, if you are a mobile user or if you're an RV customer or you're on the best effort system, does that mean that you could just crush the network even though you're going slower but download like 10 terabytes and not even have to worry about any type of cap at all? That just wouldn't make sense either, right? So to be clear, these numbers are moving targets, okay? I've already seen these numbers change twice in the last couple of months. They are constantly fluctuating. And it has to do with, as they put more satellites up there, as they get more interaction with the people and know what they're doing, because they are definitely storing a lot of data about what we're doing and what we're surfing on and where we're going and how much data we're using, when we're using it. They're taking all of this stuff and analyzing it to try to figure out how to give everyone a fair shake. 
Because when we look at their traffic neutrality statement, which I think is fantastic, where they're trying to make sure that all applications are agnostic and there's not one thing that's being discriminated against, like videos, where a lot of companies will do that. They will discriminate against you downloading massive files or tours, like a torrent network type of thing or whatever the case might be. They are not doing that at all. It is traffic neutrality in its finest. I think that is awesome. All data is created equal. That's fantastic. Once again, application agnostic. I think that's great. So anyways, bear in mind that these data caps, which were supposed to be implemented November, December time, have been pushed back till February, I believe. So we really don't have to worry about this until February, but we still should take a look at our data usage so that we know what's going on. Also, if you're new to Starlink, I would advise you to take a look at your current usage with whatever ISP you're using. Are you using a terabyte per month? Are you using two or five? To figure out how much you would be actually paying if you want to have prioritized or faster access. Or if you're okay with the speeds of basic access, then there's not a problem at all. So I think just knowing what you are going to get before you buy something is very important. And that's what I'm trying to do here with this video and with the channel in general, and of course with the Starlink playlist. So if you want more Starlink coverage about how to's, tips, tricks, what to buy, what not to buy, all this type of thing, I have about a hundred plus, I believe, videos in my Starlink playlist. Go check that out. Maybe I'll put a link here or something. Check that out. If you enjoyed this, even in the least, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you have not already. If you have, click this little button over here so when I go live or a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.